Uh, thanks, everyone, for being here and for the opportunity to be at the Institute and to, to tell you about my work. Um, so for I'll start with a, a map between, uh, for right now, Riemannian manifolds. Um, we define the energy. This is the usual Dirichlet energy as basically the L2 norm of its gradient. And we say that u is harmonic if it's critical for this energy functional. Um, uh, you can, if it helps, you can think about minimizers, which I often do since um, for most of my life, n is non-positively curved, and then everything is convex, and um, critical points are minimizers. Um, so as m or n becomes more singular, which I'll talk about in a second, the definition of the energy has to uh, you have to take more care to define the energy, but the definition of harmonic remains the same. It's always critical for energy, however we happen to define it. Um, so the singular space theory started um, back in 92 with Gromov and Shane, who let n be a simplicial complex, Riemannian simplicial complex, simplicial complex. In particular, they were interested in Euclidean buildings. Um, so they, they took their complexes to be embedded in a, a large Euclidean space and then took the energy as, um, of a map into the complex as the energy of the map into the Euclidean space. And they proved regularity things, regularity results, and um, rigidity um, for piadic representations and all sorts of stuff. In 93, Korovar and Shane um, extended the study to cat zero targets. Uh, these are targets, uh, metric spaces with an upper curvature bound in the sense of Alexandrov, which I won't get into too much here. There's a lot of analysis that goes into the definition of energy in this case. Um, let's see, in 96, I think it was, I could be off on this date. Uh, Yost uh, talked about M is a uh, metric measure space. Very, very general. Um, and in 01, um, Eels and Fugelde said M can be a um, Riemannian polyhedron. sort of using both the gromov chain and the korovar chain theory um, to, to define things um, when, when the domain has a simplicial structure. And I'd love to talk about all of these things, but um, unfortunately, I have a finite time. Pardon? Um, so they study the equivariant problem. Um, so. All of these things take a lot of time to say, so I will focus on something slightly less ambitious. Uh, so in 96, uh, Kuvert studied a harmonic maps from between um, Riemann surfaces. So R and S are, are Riemann surfaces. Um, when, when, and he's looking at harmonic maps from R to S. S endowed, endowed with some conformal metric. This is a conformal metric. And um, in particular, when this is singular flat, um, a singular flat metric, um, he proves existence of harmonic maps by approximating this metric by smooth metrics, where the curvature is sort of accumulating at, at the discrete uh, cone points of, of this singular metric. Pardon? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Riemann surfaces both, gen both have the same genus, at least two. But thank you. Um, and in fact, his theorem, um, another theorem he proved in this paper, is that the Teichmuller map, so this is um, the, the map f between these spaces 
which comes closest to being conformal uh, in its isotopy class. It's a diffeomorphism. Um, and and it, the dilatation is measuring how far it is from conformal. And, and this is closest. Um, he proved that this map is harmonic with respect to a singular flat metric on S. Which is where the theory of harmonic maps in singular spaces enters Teichmuller theory. So this is where I'm focusing, at least for today. Um, this was motivated by uh, Gerstenhaber and, and Rauch. Gersten in 54, who said that if k star is the dilatation of, of the Teichmuller map, then we consider metrics. These are conformal metrics um, on S with fixed area. Um, so we're, we're consider these conformal metrics, and we consider all, the, um, all maps from R to S in a, in a particular isotopy class, all diffeomorphisms. And we take the energy of F prime with respect to the metric rho. Um, this computes the, this minimal dilatation, this, uh, which is related to the Teichmuller distance on the Teichmuller space. Um, so they, they prove this modulo sum continuity assumption, which was uh, investigated uh, decades later by a number of authors. Um, in particular, Meze carried out this uh, max-min approach to construct the Teichmuller map uh, sort of from scratch. Um, and I'll just comment that this, this infimum problem on the interior, um, this constitutes looking for a harmonic diffeomorphism with respect to the metric rho. Um, so for each, each metric, you have to find a harmonic map, and then you, and then you take the supremum over all metrics. Um, so the spaces, so this, this is sort of the theory as of a couple of decades ago. Uh, the spaces I'm considering are x is a two-dimensional uh, simplicial complex. And we endow each face with the metric of, of an ideal, of ideal hyperbolic triangle. Um, this punctures x at the vertices. So the vertices are removed to infinity. Um, Caritos and Papadopoulos. Um, described um, what it takes for such a metric um, to be complete and parameterize the Teichmuller space of, of complete ideal hyperbolic metrics. And in order to initiate the, the gromov roche principle on, on these spaces, uh, the, the first step is this inside infimum. So this is the theorem um, that I proved with uh, Victoria Grassandreou. That's an S, which says let sigma and tau be two complete hyperbolic metrics, I, complete ideal hyperbolic metrics. Then among all maps, respect, um, all maps from x to x respecting the simplicial structure. by which I mean um, sending each face to itself, sending each edge to itself, sending each vertex to itself. Um, so among all such maps, there exists um, energy minimizing U, which is um, uh, harmonic and analytic on 
each closed face. So on each closed face of x, which is um, an ideal hyperbolic triangle, including its edges, uh, we have a classical harmonic analytic map. Um, so what's missing from this picture is, so this, this does half the job of the infimum in the gerstenhaber rauch principle. Um, it constructs this harmonic map, but so far, what's missing is, well, first of all, we have a particular hyperbo hyperbolic metric on the target. Um, so it's work in progress that we're extending this to work on uh, more general metrics on the target. Um, but the, uh, the other part of it, the conjecture that we have, is that uh, u is a diffeomorphism on each face. Uh, so that at least the interior infimum in this, in this statement will be realized by a particular map. Um, so this is motivated, the, um, so this, this conjecture is motivated uh, in the classical sense uh, by, let's see, Shane Yao uh, in 78 and Yost Shane in 82 uh, for surfaces. Um, they prove that every diffeomorphism is hom isotopic to a harmonic diffeomorphism, or equivalently, any degree one harmonic map is a diffeomorphism when the domain and target are surfaces of the same genus, at least two. In fact, even smaller genus. Um, so what is in physical complex? Do you require that at the boundary of the triangle you have three triangles? Um, so Yes, I, I did sweep under the rug a lot of the adjectives for, for my <laughs> simplicial complexes. Um, we, so we, we do require that um, there is no boundary, so every edge is, in, is adjacent to at least two faces. Um, the, I think the correct um, space to consider is not exactly this, but uh, to basically erase the non-singular edges so that we've got um, basically hyperbolic surfaces glued at least three at a time along their common boundaries. Uh, this is sort of the right space to consider, which is in the future. Um, the analysis is not much easier on non-singular edges, so it's, it's, um, yes, yes. So, so, um, so yes, yeah, so the analysis of classical harmonic maps uh, sort of breaks down on this edge, even though locally it's still a uh, manifold. So it's, it's, it's a little bit tricky, but uh, that, that's one of the details to be worked out. Um, yeah, so Yost Chain and, and, and Shane Yao uh, proved this result for surfaces, and the uh, Yost Chain method um, re relies on Yost uh, from 81 for disks. Um, who says that if you have a homeomorphism on the circle into a manifold, then the harmonic map that fills it in on the disk is a diffeomorphism. And that leads to the, the conjecture, the local version of the conjecture, which says that, I'll just draw the picture, if you have uh, n half disks glued along a common edge like so, and you map it into n half planes glued along their common edge, like so, uh, so that each half disk is going to the corresponding, um, the corresponding half plane. Uh, it says that if u, the conjecture says that if u on the boundary of x, I'll call this x, uh, by the boundary is the three semicircular arcs, um, ignoring the, the common edge, if this is a homeo, then u restricted to each half disk should be a diffio. So this is the local version of conjecture, which should be very approachable. And I hope to make a lot of progress on this term. So thank you.